Hello, it's David Perlman for the Whole Note Studio, October the 15th, 2011. Uh, I'm here with Mark S. Das. Uh, Mark. Mark, is, uh, Mark is in Toronto for uh, Iphigenie at, uh, at the Canadian Opera Company. Today is the last, last show in the run. Last performance, yeah. This is eight. Eight is enough, I guess. Eight is enough, yes. is it? Yes. <laughs> is this one a strenuous part? I know, or oh, yes, definitely. Is is I'm speaking in the lower voice right now, but everything is going to be in the higher voice tonight. Is it? <laughs> yeah. So it's challenging the top end, is oh, it? Oh, He wrote it up for, it's, it's sort of a low tenor, basically. Uh -huh. So uh, I, I got a challenge, but uh, it's fun. Second time around, second production of of this uh, opera, so I'm... Your second of this one. Right. Where I, was the first? Uh, I did in San Francisco, actually, when we say the same production, so this is the second run of this production. Uh, it's a co-production between, what, Chicago, San Francisco, yeah. and London, uh, or, excuse me, is that right? Yeah, London. And I think done, so, done yeah. in Madrid, and now Toronto, the extra. So this is not your first time in Carson's Loving Care? Oh, no, not exactly. Uh, well, done even the Salome of his uh, about three three times, I think. That was a, another co-production between uh, Torino, Turin, uh, Florence, and Madrid. And uh, I did all three of those locations. That's a visceral Salome. one, that one. Right, right. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I heard that you were coming here, uh, given that Rigoletto and this were paired, mm. my first thought was that you would be coming to do Rigoletto. All right. Because you, <coughs> Sparafucile is what you played twice here before, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. Um, when was the first? Uh, 1987. That's okay. when uh, Lotfi Mansuri hired me to, to do the job. I was singing with him in Chicago in their apprentice program and was doing, uh, what, uh, Lord Rochefort to uh, Joan Sutherland's Anna Bolena, and he was directing it. And so uh, wow. that was quite an exciting little thing there. And he you know, heard the voice, he saw the presence on stage, and said, you yeah, know, how would you like to come to Toronto? and?" Uh, do Spada Fujili for me. Uh, wow. I said, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> so that was 87? That was 87, And yeah. then you came back in 1994? Uh, yeah, 89, I think it was, they did the Sprecher in uh, the Tauberflirt, the Magic Flute. And then, okay. uh, and then the next was the redo of... Uh, of Rigoletto. Rigoletto, yeah, with uh, Nicholas Munich, the production. Uh -huh. Do you find yourself pushed into the villain roles? I mean, a better question is, is there any opera where the bass baritone gets the girl? <laughs> right, well, I don't know. You could talk about the Giovanni never really gets the girl. Uh, so, uh, no, hmm. yeah, we have yeah. to think about this one for a while. Yeah, uh, probably yeah. for a while. We don't <laughs> have to. But. Yeah. Um, so, um, you said you were, you were, you apprenticed in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You started you were probably the oldest among the apprentices at that point, or, mm. or would you say not? Cause, no, uh, not at all. I mean, it was, uh, uh, this was, what, 85, 86, I think, yeah, in Chicago. I had been um, Santa Fe Opera at Apprentice, actually. I mean, there's called the ensemble when you're in the opera companies, right. usually. So that was in Chicago. So I started my apprenticeship in uh, 83 in uh, Santa Fe, where mm -hmm. I was just there singing, you know, Mephistopheles' Faust. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, then Chicago was uh, 85, 86, and from 86 I went to the Metropolitan Opera, get my first contract, I was 28. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, I was really psyched and pumped to have my first contract there, knowing that uh -huh. Cesare Siepi had gotten his first uh, role at uh, 28, but he actually sang. Uh, well, your <laughs> I first waiting, I was waiting for, I was doing my understudy, so I was waiting to go on. But, uh, and trying not to wish ill on whoever oh, you no, were understudying. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, John, John McCurdy was a... An older guy, so he'd sung with my teacher at the time, Walter Castle. Uh, I also studied with Nicola Rosliemeni when I was at mm -hmm. Indiana, but uh, he knew Walter Castle, so that broke the ice because you know sometimes you look at these guys on in the wings, you know, and they're waiting to go on. You know, they they think mm, so they want to say anything to you at all, and that's that yeah. broke the ice. I said, you know, I, I started with Walter. Oh, Walter, geez, you know. So all you had to do is bring up a name, Nicola Rosliemeni in Italy. They just say, oh yeah, Nicola. Wow, you know, the same uh -huh. with Maria Callas. You know, he was. Certainly a real dramatic guy, you know, and both of them had different types of intensity. Walter was internal, sort of, you know, so they all came out here, and, and uh, Nicola was like, you know, he's like the Boris, you know, everything was like on the outside almost. But it's just different ways that they, they had their own intensity, and uh, they brought it, they brought it, <laughs> really, to the stage. So mm -hmm. it was great, great to have both of those as uh, role models and teachers.
This wasn't what you were planning to do from a young kid, though, right? From I, I right. did a bit yeah, of reading yeah. before the yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. I, I read something you said about. Um, I, I read somewhere something you said about uh, grade five teacher telling you you were mm. good, and just to, to paraphrase, was keep quiet about that one. I don't uh, right, think right, I want yeah. that too widely known. Well, it, it scared the heck out of me. I mean, uh, she had me sing a little bit of the Wells Fargo wagon solo, and I don't think the voice had uh, broken much. And, oh, the Wells Fargo, and I was like, oh, she said that's gorgeous. You can go to New York right now and make a lot of money. I thought, <coughs> what? <laughs> that would just scare the heck out of me. I, what I scared you, the money or the New York? Well, I don't know, the money, just to get this fame sort of thing. You uh -huh. know? So if I've gotten the fame, it wasn't the money, certainly. <laughs> so when did, you, when did you say, aha? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, after that, I, I went and uh, I, I was sort of dropping some grades in school. I had to do some acceleration at the end, so I took some extra credit in chorus and then drama. And so they just came together, a Godspell, you know, they were doing it, and the drama teacher said, hey, you're in chorus, right? Would you like to do, uh, you know, Godspell? I said, sure, why not? So that kind of got it started, you know, and uh, my background from, you know, wanting to sort of be the priesthood and whatnot, and uh, certainly the gospel of uh, St. Matthew and singing was just an ideal opportunity to throw those together. Uh, so oratorio was, in a way, sacred opera as, pretty, a, as an introduction yeah, to yeah, the... Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the, uh, that, that, that character in the beginning of the, the play, a prepare ye the way of the Lord. I'm yeah, walking yeah. down the aisle in my high school. And so, I mean, that was John the Baptist now. I'm singing La Scala, you know, the Johanna. Sure. And so it's that, that sense of, you know, 30 years later, here he is. But um, the, the whole thing of doing... Uh, uh, that play led to uh, I think the, the guy who did the um, the, the orchestra uh, in the uh, the band guy that was uh, at um, my high school mm -hmm. also was involved in the uh, production they were doing in the summer, which was the first time they'd done a Cleveland uh, program devoted devoted to the arts. So you got training in acting, singing, and dancing, and people right. came in from New York, and they were your <coughs> they're, they're your uh, instructors, your teachers. So all your basic you know, triple that. threat skills yeah, exactly. brought yeah. together in the It was uh, amazing, you know, get the levels, you know, as far as your, your acting and singing. It was all about doing levels, you know, one to ten and, uh, you know, doing improvisation on the stage, uh, doing vocalises with uh, sort of class instruction and just kind of movement, just basic, you know, moving on, on the stage and get used to, to mm -hmm. being there. And uh, that was... That was kind of a, a click moment. Uh, you know, I left and the, the vocal uh, instructor said, you know, I'm kind of sad that you're going to the seminary because I see, see you have some really uh, some, some talents here that could be uh, used for the um, betterment of the arts and whatnot. I said, well, you know, I'll try to continue and take voice lessons for the ministry at least. And that's what I did. And, uh, and again, in India, it was a smaller St. Joseph's College where I went to uh, a seminary, mm -hmm. Society of the Precious Blood, uh, actually this, the order. Uh, I was in chorus, you know, and they had a lot of solo things. It's a uh, big fish in a small pond, and uh, there were a time. There was a time when the spring concert we did uh, some uh, medley from uh, Fiddler on the Roof, I think, you know. So I'm thinking, you know, sunrise, sunset, you know, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, wow, this feels so natural, you know. Yeah. It's, it's like, I mean, that's one of those times you should be careful. It's like, oh gosh, I could really go off right now and just, you know, get too comfortable, but. I felt this is where I should be, you know, there was no sense of anxiety whatsoever, and I was communicating words, and mm. the melody was just flowing out, so... Mm. Mm. Yeah, and words and music like that, right, not exactly. separate entities, but exactly. different faces of the same God, you know? Right, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So your connection with Toronto? Uh, well, yeah, I have, I have a wife uh, that, uh, that lives here. <laughs> and you met her when you, were, when you came here to perform? Or right, you yes, met out well, way when? back in 1992 uh, when oh, I was yeah. here. To, so so you, you share time between different places? Do you find, how do you, how does uh, yeah. it work? Yeah, oh, exactly. I mean, uh, she has some work uh, in the States. She's a director in uh, Wigs and Makeup for uh, Florentine Opera. She's going there in Milwaukee, so I'll, I'll go there and follow her and you know, do yeah. whatever she needs to do. She does a little bit of my makeup here, so that's um, you know it's kind of a trade off and whatever mm -hmm. we we sort of work out well together. Sometimes it can be difficult when there are singers singer uh, you know relationships. Yeah, singer so, singer you know, can be hard. Can that's be, for sure. Uh, yeah, uh, benefits and yeah some disadvantages. So yeah, this one uh, seems to work pretty well. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, I'm pleased <laughs> so far. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and then we have a. Uh, Another stint coming up. I mean, we, we had finally tied the knot in Torino, in Italy. So it was an overseas mm -hmm. uh, wedding uh, too long ago. And uh, you had the paparazzi to come in and uh, had no one invited. But all of a sudden, you have like uh, 12 journalists and uh, photographers and on television. Oh, sure. Yes. Uh, 
But the, you know, they like to publicize the city. They like to know that people actually are still getting married, and you know, they, they mm -hmm. <laughs> come come to our city and, and get married, something like right. that. So, so that's a, that's a, it's a good um, partnership. Mm -hmm. So, with talking a bit about Iphigenie, because uh, mm -hmm. very mixed reactions to this production from from people. For me, mm -hmm. for me, I love <coughs> I love the permission that the quiet set. Mm -hmm gives to just absorb completely into the thing itself. Right. Uh, the Rigoletto that was on, did you see the Rigoletto? I've that was seen here? a bit of the Rigoletto, yes. You didn't see the whole... I did not see the whole thing. It must be hard to watch without <laughs> wanting to join in the well, singing. Well, or... sort of, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'm watching and um, you know, there's yeah. a, the directors that want to have the, the music come out and then they want the, uh, that not to be obscured. And yeah, and then there's the other one where it's look at that room and you, right, know, right. you can look at the room as much as you like while people are singing and it won't mm. interrupt the singing. I mean, to me, the, the beauty of a production where it's almost like shadow light mm. theater right. is that really as an audience member you have permission to invent. Sure. If the whole thing's invented and is out there in front of you, you don't have the same permission to participate. So yeah. I, I'm just wondering, as a singer, I, I, obviously you don't get to see yourself on stage. You know, mm. what, what feeling do you get? Uh, what does a production like this one give or take away from you as a, as a performer in terms of opportunity? Well, I don't know. You mean because there's modern dress, and because it's and so quiet and there's no distractions, yeah. and it's really focused, and um, yeah, basically, an open you're not set required to be walls. a clown at the same time as you're just doing. You get yeah. to, to me. It seems like you just have permission to to do your craft without being. For the most part, yeah, I mean, as you say, the production like this, the, the, the Salome that uh, Robert Carson did is a bit different in the sense of. Uh, of the stillness of the character, I did Johanna, and, you know, John the Baptist. Yeah. And his John the Baptist is a very, some people call him plastic. Uh, it's you know, all happening like to that. him, he's not well, making exactly. it yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, it comes out of the, uh, the desert, it's like Lawrence of Arabia, you know, wrapped yeah. in a turban, and it's a huge, uh, it's a spectacle, he's like, he almost floats onto the stage. Yeah. And so it's a mirage, her, her image of what he is, yeah. uh, Salome. So in this, uh, he wants, um, as he talked to me, he said he wanted more animation. He wanted me to grab the sword. He wanted almost a madman running around. Um, a little more difficult because the singing requires uh, a little less movement sometimes, and mm -hmm. uh, because it's such a high roll. I mean, there's, uh, there's E's, there's F's, there's uh, you know F sharps, there's G's. It just it goes up and up and up and up and up, and uh, there's not a time for you to really relax very much. Mm. Uh, I, I did it well in San Francisco. I was a little bit faster. The Tempe, our conductor uh, Pablo is uh, wonderful uh, as far as giving time and whatnot to really adjust things. So it is a, a, a time when I can really reflect on the uh, action, on the words, on the drama. And, uh, you know, I've done it in a Zitzprobe, you stand still, you're, you sing it. So I know that I can sing it uh, yeah. very well. But then the challenge just becomes to go up and down is a long way to the back of the stage. And he wants you to traverse the entire distance to the back of the stage and then come back down stage. And as you're doing it, sort of stay in motion with the sword, sort of throwing it around. You're right. So, you know, doing a, a hula hoop sort of weighted hula hoop I do sometimes uh, well, every morning, basically. Oh, I yeah. just get the, the stamina and make sure that the, the band is sort of there always flexing. And uh, whatever I'm juggling, whether I'm jumping rope, I'm doing solfeggio, but I'm doing dance steps backstage, you know, and they all see me doing that. But it's necessary in order to try to make it, uh, you know, uh, an illusion that uh, it's... Uh, that simple, it's effortless right, when it's effortless there's so step. much effort required. Exactly. Uh -huh. so, uh, but this is, this is a time when I can give more to the words. I'm, I'm pleased to have a second time to do uh, the production, mm -hmm. and uh, it has gone uh, much better. I can think about the drama uh, a lot more than I could the first time. The first time it's just pretty much survival. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's the sense of, hmm, you can survive, let's give some more meaning to, these, uh, to the people and, and uh, see what happens. So it's, it's, been a, it's been a good experience. I mean, even to get through eight of these, I did think I did six in San Francisco, there's that sense of, you know, you want to kiss the ground at the, the end because it's, uh, you know, the Pope being up seven to, uh, what, I'm at uh, 
thirty-nine thousand feet, probably, uh, and it's, uh, that's what it seems yeah. like, basically. And the parachute's in the back of the plane, so you and, know, if something going to start going wrong, turbulence. Okay, I got to get that a parachute, but uh, yeah. I got to fake it for a while. And this particular roll, it's really standing high jump. You don't get any long run. You got to you got to hit the ground running right, and yeah. just go till you stop. Within yeah. three short phrases of recitative, I'm into the aria. And I'm hitting a high G within uh, two two phrases within the aria, so it's uh, mm. <laughs> it's let's go. Uh, the tenors, you know, you have to feel about you know doing celeste aida. You know, you say, oh, there's no time to warm up. I get out there and I gotta go, and I gotta sing this high. You know, B at the end is a pianissimo. Uh, yeah, well, it's at the end. So yeah, <laughs> it's the end of the aria. So you know, right. <laughs> I get a little chance to warm up. Yeah, right. Uh, Interesting. Anyway. So. Um, on the question of you know directorial cruelty, I'm not mm. asking you to name names, but I mm. but I, I sometimes go and you said you you know the opportunity to have your feet under you, right, right, and I you know I I look at productions where where Brunhilde has to do 45 minutes on her knees, <laughs> or worse, sitting, you know, and I say to myself, mm. well, where does where does the where does the relationship between the who who's defending mm. the singers these days? Mm. It's not usually the stage director in terms no, of no, not defending, you know. And the music director conductor used to be the conductor music director used to be the the one who would right. just say Yeah, you that's know, a little bit much. Don't handle the merchandise. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. No, yeah, they do it more hands-off these days. Occasionally they'll say something, but for the most part they're just waiting for, I think, the singer to stand up for themselves, themselves yeah. or each other. Yeah. Or each other occasionally. but yeah, uh, Mostly for yourself. Yeah, for yourself. You have to do the process and, um, yeah, I mean, I go through the, you know, the acting techniques and whatnot, you know, uh, Olivier and uh, there's some other acting tips and whatnot they give you, but just straight acting and you know, it calls for you to Take in the concept, work it through a couple of times before you say, no, this won't work. Right. And um, so, yeah, and when you're singing, you have a lot of adrenaline going and whatnot, and maybe even in rehearsal you'll try something out and it doesn't quite work, and you say, well, I'll get to it, because you mark sometimes. Yeah, you, you're marking, and, and then, then all of a sudden. Yeah. So you yeah, think, exactly. oh, sure, I can do this, and then you realize we're real late sometimes, like, you know, mm -hmm. pre-dress rehearsal, you got the orchestra, you got, you know, you got to really sing. Think, hmm, this is not really going to work. So it's, that kind of goes against what you would do in straight acting, because then you yeah. just you know digest it, come back to the next rehearsal or a rehearsal after that, and give it the you know full um, effort, and then you can say to the director, hmm, I've given it my best, and I need to do something else. We need to have another option. Can we do Plan A, Plan B? Right. And uh, so that's the challenge when you're uh, singing opera to actually try to come up with that theoretically or in your mind or project what it's going to be like when you're actually singing full voice. Mm. That's not easy because you're involved in so many things. Opera obviously is, you know, the culmination of all the arts. You got everything exactly. going out there. So yeah, and you're part of a totalitarian thing. Yeah, you right. just use the word lightly. So you can certainly miss that yeah. uh, opportunity to come up with it. But it's something you talk to young singers about, and uh, because they're the ones that actually get put upon the most. Yeah, uh, me as a, somewhat of a seasoned veteran, uh, they'll look at me and they'll say. Oh, okay. If I just say no, I don't think this will work. I'll try it this way. Let me try it mm -hmm. that way. But there are times when you just want to be, which I usually want to be, a good colleague, and I'll go along yeah. and say, okay, I'll give it a shot. And you know, I, I don't know why I say after the, you know, beating myself up, is why the heck did you say that? Yeah, or right. Say, this <laughs> won't work. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's just go on to Plan B. So, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a difficulty, especially you say in a role like this. I'm doing a lot of movement. Uh, a lot of the directing was done. Robert Carson came in the, like the last five rehearsals basically we were we had done the orchestra already we had done staging on the stage and then he came right. in and said okay let's go back in the laboratory right now but he said i'm not here to upset the process you guys have done anything everything and susan graham she's you know she's saying yeah we're we're about to close tomorrow night <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and you're here but uh you know it's kind of a joke but in some ways uh, it became a little disconcerting because he is as i said he wanted me to do a lot of stuff and i had already worked in a good sort of I'm setting here, then I'll do a little bit of movement here. But when you say the whole thing, you're off balance. Thought, OK, again. let me rework it and um, see if we can come up with it. And you know, I had to make some compromises. And mm -hmm. by the time we, he saw it opening, he said, good. It's so, a good show. Yeah. It's a good show. It's a beautiful, beautiful stage of matched voices and yeah. of 
equal confidence and energy and um, yeah, yeah fun group singers who listen right yeah, singers yeah. who listen that was really important and Gluck is amazing this you know the the post sort of baroque thing that uh, he get tired of all those uh, liberties all the you know the da capo arias yeah. and whatnot no, 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 no. So how about just sing it the way he kind of wrote it and i give you some drama to do it with and yeah. then just go so he's done that, and, and uh, uh, you know. But I'll throw in some scales that yeah, could have come there, off right. Herbie Hancock's template once right, in a while, yeah, because yeah. some of his sliding stuff is so intricate. You say, well, where, which yeah, century yeah. did that come out of? <laughs> right. Because it seems like you, it's all going to be easy, mm. and then all of a sudden you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I liked about it because you really are listening as an right. audience yeah, yeah. and you're hearing it all unfolding mm. and it's permission to listen. Yeah. Usually I hate opera in the dark. All right. Okay. You know, oh, good. They've got $60,000 worth of lights just yeah, on the yeah. first rack the first, right. and we're all trying to figure out who's <laughs> singing, you know, right. and there was a vogue for maybe 10 years. Okay seemed to be out of it a little bit, but there was about 10 years where it seemed to be mandatory for the, for the opera to be in the dark. You know, everything oh, okay. was gloomy yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, not my, Prince not of my darkness, cover. Uh, Prince of Darkness, designers. lighting yeah, designers. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Teaching, do you, do, do you teach? Yes, uh, I was teaching, uh, I taught a couple of years at Michigan State University in, uh, uh, was it uh, Lansing? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, East Lansing. So yeah, I know it was a wonderful opportunity. I taught uh, I think full time the first year. Second year, I tried to do a little uh, half time or part time, and then they wanted me to do a full time. And I just uh, the schedule was just that too was a choice. Loaded. Yeah, then, it was yeah. just uh, packed. But I enjoyed it immensely. I mean, and uh, that's that was a school that was devoted to uh, music therapy and education. Okay. So uh, you know, I had some students here that you know, I had one girl who had a hard time matching pitch even, you know, so we went through the solfeggio, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, do, and it was like she could just somehow get what she needed to get, and I felt really good about it, and it was like, you know, you're going to have a guitar, probably, you're doing music therapy, and you, you need some basic stuff, so people mm -hmm. will feel um, healthy and well for, through music. You think you'll go back um, to that? Oh, I definitely hope so, yeah. yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Uh, one of my colleagues I just met in Vienna, actually, uh, teaches at uh, Westminster Choir College. He said, I, I got a position for you if you, if you ready for it. I think, oh, geez, mm. uh, maybe not yet. Uh, maybe not get, yet. Getting no, there, getting no, there's there. another no. part. Just right. Well, I'm not singing so the best are, of my life. It's a, it's a hard one. You say, what okay, are the, you what are the parts now. that are out there that you say, I'm waiting for that one? Any? Uh, well, I don't know. That uh, La Scala, Johanna, and that was like, you know, I thought that I could die it. after that one. That was pretty much it. Uh, you know, the M Lauren Mazel came back after my second performance and congratulated me, and I thought, oh, okay. you know, that, this is pretty do. good. Yeah, yeah. Do you do much concert? Concert, opera in concert, or recital? I have, work? yeah, have? it's quite a bit. Yeah, I enjoy recital uh, immensely. I mean, uh, I've done uh, what uh, ten different languages I've sung in now, and usually the recitals. I think I had one recital where it was probably seven or eight languages. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, kind of playing with that. And it's nice when you can shift back and forth and feel the uh, the rhythms uh, well. I, I did, I did, it, yeah, eight eight different languages. I did a Spanish in that one. Mm -hmm. so I did a Spanish, Czech, Russian, Italian, French, German. And uh, yeah, so now I added uh, Hebrew and uh, what, uh, Hungarian. I sang a, a little bit of uh, what the uh, Bluebeard's Castle for La Scala, oh, yeah. I think, in audition. So yeah, the, um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I love it uh, listening to the languages and how they can be expressed uh, using the nouns sort of as the, the basis of trying mm. to get communicate what the actual words are, uh, which people tend to pick up on, you know, uh, yeah. the native speakers will come up after this, oh, I, I, I could understand every word, you know, I can get the meaning of what you're right. trying to say. So that's, uh, it's really exciting for me to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. But roles, still, I don't know, the, the villains in Hoffman, I, I get to do again in, in uh, Tokyo coming up. Um, and it's been a while since I did that. Um, other things, I don't know, the, so the title roles are there. Uh, Flying Dutchman, I'll do, uh, you know, next year in Torino. I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Um, you know, Don Giovanni is one I've worked on quite a bit, but um, you know, I haven't had a chance to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, Don Quixote, uh, you know, looking at the French things, you know, Massonet is very, very exciting. Yeah. Boris Kudinov, you know, maybe. Uh, so that's, there's still some possibilities. Yeah. So unlike the Helden tenor, the voice is going to stay, right? You're not. Uh, I think for the most part, yeah. I mean, doing uh, Votan's uh, recently. Uh, 
click very well. I was kind of leery about that, especially coming from more of the bel canto type mm -hmm. of uh, lyric type of vo vocal things. I thought, hmm, maybe this is a little too soon, but it seems to fit very well. And people will usually say, have, have said, you know, well, you sing this as if it's kind of bel canto like, and that's that's not bad to hear that. Uh, hear Johannan uh, German as if it's kind of Italianate sometimes. Uh, yeah. It's a, a nice little spin. Well, his wife wouldn't have been in such a bad mood all the time if he'd been a bit more bel canto ish from time to time. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. So, yeah, no, it's been a wonderful, uh, wonderful quest. Other work in Toronto. We, we, you know, you're coming back almost as if. It was, all, it was a surprise to find out that you're here a lot of the time oh, right, because, yeah. you know, with our little magazine and I'm recognizing names or not recognizing names a lot right. and you you do you have any other stuff coming up beyond COC here in Toronto uh, well in Toronto I mean it'll be a week from now I get to this award from Planet Africa and uh, I get a chance to do some little performing while I'm uh, receiving an award for uh, say more about the the award an award for uh, this uh, their entertainment award I mean they have other awards that they uh, give Planet Africa all those of uh, African descent people that have achieved uh, certain things and uh, you know certainly I've done quite a few things in my life uh, and they were uh, recognizing me for that. And so I said, receive an award. My, my intention was to sing for the ceremony. And then they said, well, you know, we should actually be giving you an award. So it's like, okay, fine. Right. And, uh, my, so where, my where, and w where and when is that? Uh, it's going to be at uh, Roy Thompson. Uh, okay. It's on the 22nd. Uh, of October. Of October. So yeah. coming up. Coming uh, up, yeah. Just about a week. Yeah, just about a week. Yeah. And you will or won't get to sing? I will, yeah. You will, I have yeah. a nice rendition of Old Man River I think I'll pull out and uh, just keep rolling along and see how that, that works. That'll get the bottom octave re-engaged yeah, exactly, after yeah. so us, Finally, right? oh boy, I get the two, two octaves here, the lower part. You talked about juggling as an aspect of memorization. Mm, yeah. Uh, how does that work? Well, certainly different parts of the brain are engaged when you are doing some juggling and, uh, you know, the rhythmic sort of things of the ball is falling, pop, 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 pop. Uh, helps just to keep uh, the words going, pop, pop, pop. And it's, it's muscle memory. A lot of times muscle so, memory. People, somebody asked me after, before one of the dress rehearsals, you know, they had a talk uh, in the middle. Uh, and the, he said, you know, what happens when you just draw blank? What, what, what do you do? You know, a stage fright likes things. And I said, well... I don't know, a lot of times I feel it coming on and you know, you just trust it, you don't push too hard and a lot of times it is that muscle memory thing. I do this gesture and that word comes out and a lot of times that's kind of what the juggling is. So does. that's what bah, you're bah, doing bah, is, bah, is bah, creating bah, bah. the mind-muscle right. connection. Or yeah. for mistakes, there are times when you go through phrases and you, you got, you've learned something the wrong way and so to unlearn that you go through a process of just kind of juggling through and having something to coordinate it back into right. the, the way you need it to, to, to be. Uh, and it does relax you as well. I mean, uh, as a sense of, you know, backstage, just kind of, you know, juggling back and forth. Right. Flare on the nouns. Exactly. <laughs> the drop, that's the first thing you learn in, in juggling, you know. Pfft. The drop. The drop. The drop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So, uh, so with the, so backstage here, you have your own enough space to everybody's got their own routines and all right yeah i mean i can go out in the hallway if i do a little jump rope or whatnot which i, I do occasionally just have a little space uh we're inside the room i've got a ping pong table i even brought because i have a long time between my first entrance and my last yeah, that's one true. so there's a little mini ping pong table i set up and uh, i even have a ping pong robot which i didn't bring this time because uh, it's a little it seems a little s shorter the distance yeah, between right. now than it was before right. uh, but uh yeah i mean some people will come in and we just kind of you know Hit a, hit a few of the balls, and uh, that, that, that does some, and you can always, I can say the words when I'm doing that, you know, a little bit, tack, 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 uh -huh. so it always keeps things going that way. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, they like my innovations, I have all kinds of little, uh, with the, the tennis ball and the string, you know, I do that, just the, the oh, band, yeah. and just the, the, was it, fill and drill, I think it's called, those tennis ball trainers, uh, Susan Graham, she got into when I saw that, she saw that, I said, oh, can I try that? You know, so I Would you say advice. most of your colleagues at this stage are, are aware, are, are more aware now than previously of the extent to which you are an athlete for opera, or do you think that's... Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I'd The good that. ones have always known that. 
Well, I think that, yeah, it's true. I mean, the good ones have known it. I mean, even Pavarotti, you looked at him even at his most, you know, you know obese sort of stages. He had, he's got this band of muscle. I mean, that, that sound just didn't go like that yeah. from, from nowhere. I mean, he has certainly a lot of uh, muscle underneath. But to actually be seen and to be attractive with HD now, you know, it, it's necessary to be really fit. Uh, it reminds me again, that's uh, Olivier talking about, his, about acting, you know, his, his like sixth year, whatever, what he did his interview saying, you know, why go to a gym now? Because I want to keep my job. I want to, you know, keep working. Well, that was the, the idea of straight acting, obviously. You still had to be very yeah. attractive on stage. Opera, mm, if you're large, okay, fine, but you got the, the chops. Can you give the, you know, the goods? That's what they're really listening for. Uh, but now they want both. And uh, so people are becoming aware now that you have to be physically attractive uh, to the camera and to try to deliver as well. Uh, not always easy. Not but, easy. Uh, <laughs> but at least it's something to focus on. You know, that's sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. This is interesting. Thanks a lot, Mark. Hey, my pleasure. Yeah, good, good to, to be here. You. Excellent. Cheers.